Okay, welcome back. So, Tournament of Towns in 1989 has the following problem, which is you have a convex polyhedron that's floating in the sea and you want most of its volume to be below the water level and most of its surface area to be above the water level. That's the problem statement. Oh. So, um... I have to assume that the the mass of the thing is uniform, right? <laughs> Probably. It's it's debatable whether this is geo. Hang on, what? Oh, that's the wrong board. Um, yeah, convex. If it's if without convex, the problem is pretty straightforward. Uh, so I want to first think about the one-dimensional version, actually, because if I have a one-dimensional version, you can get the, or sorry, 2D version, because polyhedrons are annoying. But for a 1D, so if I just have a convex closed region, um, I can I get the perimeter to mostly lie above? With like some area below. So like you have this line and then you want the top to have t small area but you want small area but long perimeter for a convex thing and then hmm. let me let me draw the So here at the best the for the bottom the best thing is like uh the quote unquote best thing that's convex and right is this shape. This is like the most volume for it, it this should be the best volume per perimeter ratio, right? Uh oh. Well very wide triangle. I f feel like if I do something tiny here, that's not enough, right? The problem is I need at least as much So I need a thing with at least as long arc length, but with area pretty small. And I need to stay inside these bars. Is it possible? If I make, if I, at the bottom is a true semicircle. Um, Wait, does wide and flat triangle work? Oh crap, seriously? Okay, okay. 
So the claim is that if this has the same perimeter, I can get the ratio arbitrarily. <laughs> oh, I have to do calculation. <laughs> no. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I agree that for 2D to 3D, the, I had the same thought, which is you take a prism, make it long enough, and then the ends don't matter. Um, okay. This requires calculation. <laughs> oh, this is so annoying. Oh, come on. <laughs> Let's say this is one. This is an angle. <laughs> epsilon. What is this? Cotangent epsilon? No. What, what am I? Uh, secant epsilon. So what is this? What if I just make this equal to secant epsilon? Then we're definitely okay, right? What? I applied to math camp one year and got in, and my parents didn't let me go because I was going to mop. Jesus Christ, this calculation is so annoying. Uh, how long? Okay, but I'm, I'm just going to compute it. This is. So I'm multiplying. C Secant epsilon times secant epsilon minus one, right? Wait, that's not how that's not how fractions work. Uh Okay, and this one is this this is equal to secant this is one over cosine epsilon. So as Yeah, this thing approaches actually zero. And this thing approaches one. So we're definitely good. So that settles the 2D case, and then you can make it a prism. Just take the ratio of the heights. Oh my god, I hurt worse. <laughs> Same thing, right? Yeah. Anyways, I raked it so that the red thing is just slightly longer than the green thing by construction. So once I get epsilon small enough, if I make the prism long enough, it's okay. I'm surprised this works. I actually thought this wouldn't work. I, th I thought of flat triangle pretty early, but I didn't try it first.
Thank you. Porf, porf, porf one for the follow. No, this, this should be. This is it, I think. Uh. Well, I feel like if you. if Somehow I feel like if 2D. If it works for 3D. It should work for 2D as well by taking like a random cross section or something. If you can get a weird construction for 3D, then you take a random cross section and that band, like by averaging argument, that band seems like it should like sort of work for 2D. That's not rigorous at all, but I would have been very surprised if it was true for 3D and false for 2D. Bounds are fishy, but I think you sp you spin the cutting thing. Like it's a polyhedron, so it's not going to have. Um... Yeah, it's a little funky, but I think it's a good reason to believe, at least as a heuristic, that it's it would be kind of strange for it to be true for three D and not for two D. Surface area is not integral of curved plane. Th I guess, yeah. What if I spin it randomly as well? Spin it randomly and slice randomly. That should more or less uniformize things, right? I don't know. That's just a heuristic. I, I agree it doesn't compile to a proof even in principle. Um, but that's part of why I did the 2D case, because I was like, I, I don't think it should fail for 2D and work for 3D. This write-up will be quick. I'm not going to write out the details. Um. Okay, cool. Yeah. Yeah, actually, I could have just picked it like a sufficient ninety percent. It was like ninety percent, so I probably could have picked like a sufficiently, um, something Pythagorean triple. <laughs> like I don't know. Whatever, it's not that important. Okay, that's done. What should we do next? <laughs> 